Okay, so WWE, I mean, we talked about social media and what they want with social media and the changes and everything like that. Your thoughts on all of this stuff. You were there recently. Yeah, the the, the big thing that I, I think will really um, annoy the boys is I know there's a lot of them that do the, you know, the prepackaged meal gimmicks and shit. Like, that was, like, the big difference from when I was on the road because that wasn't a thing at the time. And you'd always have to go out to restaurants and stuff. And I noticed when I was back the last time that everybody's got the, you know, I don't even know what all the different names of the prepackaged, you know, diet meals and stuff where, you know, it's so easy on the road. And even some of my students that, you know, had been there and, and they eat for free all the time. Like they, you know, they're going to be coming up to Calgary for two weeks and they'll just contact, you know, whoever is the prepackaged meal guy in Calgary. And as long as they post the you know pictures of the labels and put over the store on their Instagram or their Twitter and stuff. It's like they'll get a box of these meals shipped to the building. And when you're traveling on the road trying to watch your diet and stay lean, especially, you know, now that they've got a wellness policy and you can't just visit your pharmacy to stay the le- as lean as you want, being able to get these meals and obviously getting them cheap or free is a huge advantage. And if they're not going to be able to, you know, just – contact icon meals or whatever the hell some of these services are and and get them as easy and free like that's a a bit of a pain in the butt and i can understand wb wanting to try to cut their own deals and benefit the company but it's like that's such a huge bonus like even just you know how many guys in every company and non-companies it's like jimmy seafood are we ever going to see jimmy seafood being plugged on twitter anymore it's like every wrestler i've ever seen on twitter has the going to jimmy seafood and it's like i'm assuming they get free or discounted food because they always hashtag jimmy seafood and tag them and they get a a retweet and it's like those kind of little perks are are important to wrestlers on the road and and it's a shame they're losing them but the thing that i would like and it's something that i couldn't believe they didn't do when i was there in 2000 is you know and with social media they've got even more of a, a, a ability to do it it's like i'd like to see the company cut some deals to help the boys out like it always dumbfounded me that as a wrestler who was on the road with another hundred wrestlers renting cars 200 days a year that WWE didn't have a corporate rate for us through national. It's like, we all rent from national. We all, you know, we get our Emerald Isle card stuff and get our own things. But it's like, why doesn't the company have an official rental car company? And why doesn't the company get us a, you know, a 30% discounted corporate rate? Or why aren't we getting, um, when Jay and I, Christian and I traveled on the road, Jay loved his Marriott's. And... We started traveling with Chris Nowinski for a while because Chris Nowinski's dad had a Marriott connection and he had a, you know, a staff discount type gimmick that we could get deals at Marriott. So all of a sudden, Chris Nowinski is Jay's best friend and he's our third man riding partner now because he can get a deal on hotels. And I, I just always wondered, it's like, why doesn't the office contact, again, whether you're going to go the Hilton chain, the Marriott chain or whatever, and it's like, how many rooms, not obviously in the pandemic, but in the pre-pandemic era, and hope to God we eventually get past this crap, how many hotel rooms in the course of a year do WWE independent contractors and employees book? And it's like, why are we paying full price or, again, I'd like it if they just book them for us, but even as talent, if you have to book it yourself, it's like, why do we not have a corporate deal where we get discounted rates and at least then with them you know owning your social media that they could still if you know wwe organized that if you you know tweet out a photo of you at the you know emerald isle and in, in national every time you go we've got a deal where we get 50 percent off our cars and it's like social media would be flooded with national car promotions and it would be a way that wwe could you know, show their power as a brand, if you will, the the reach of having, you know, all of the talent and famous people with their social media accounts or Instagram accounts. And, and that way they could at least help us out and us. I'm not there anymore, but you know what I mean? Help the boys out with sponsorships and deals. And that way it wouldn't sting as bad that they're potentially taking away your your ability to, you know, promote bang energy drink in a bikini on Instagram. Not that I've been doing that recently. 
The thing to me is when you sign your con, let's say that I, I signed a contract in 2019 with WWE. I was going to be a wrestler. Okay. Granted, you can't guarantee that I'm going to get four house show dates a week or three house show dates a week or whatever. But when I signed that contract, I mean, the assumption was I'm going to be making, I'm going to be working these three or four house show days every week. I don't know how much I'm going to make, 500 bucks a shot or whatever, 750 whatever. We're talking fifteen, two thousand dollars $2,000 a week. I was expecting when I signed that contract, okay? Then we get into a global pandemic and they, they cut all these house shows. All right. Well, there's nothing WWE can do about it. They're not going to run house shows in the middle of a pandemic. So, to me, the right thing to do is to allow your talent to make a little bit of extra money on the side doing whatever they're doing. It just irritates me that, listen, I understand that WWE has the right to not allow you to get these outside sponsorships if they're not getting... I understand that. And everyone's argument when they argue with me about this is, but Brian, every company does this. Bro, I don't give a fuck what everybody, every other company does. The fact of the matter is, they can do whatever they want. And I don't understand why this can't be a situation where, look, go play some fucking video games and get your cheer money and, like, do whatever. When the pandemic is over... And we can start doing a couple of house shows again or whatever. Or when we can create our own platform where we can replace that money that we're taking away from you. Like, great, do it. But it's people wonder, and actually they don't wonder, most people understand, but like these wrestlers are so infuriated by the shit this company is doing because we are in the middle of a pandemic. It's like you said, well, okay, you don't want people to get a sponsorship or get free fr like free food from Jimmy's Seafood or whatever? Well, what are you going to do to to help them out during this time? What are they doing to help out the talent during this time? Can well, you answer this question? Well, I can certainly play a different side of that, though, which if you signed a, or let's say I did, uh, greater chance of that, if I signed a deal in 2018 with WWE, where my downside base pay was, say, $400,000 a year, and I'm figuring that I'm going to be on the road three or four days a week every week to earn that $400,000 a year, and now we're in a global pandemic, and I'm on the road only one day a year, and I'm actually working one quarter of the dates, and I'm still getting my $400,000 a year downside, it's not poor me, it's fucking yay. I'm still making my 400000 or my $500,000 downside, and I'm working one quarter as much. So I don't think all talent is suffering. Now, if you were someone with a low yeah, downside... Yeah, but let me stop you for a second. Let me stop you for a second. So when you were there, not this most recent time, but when you were an actual wrestler, okay? Yes. You don't have to tell us how much you made for your downside. You can if you want to, but did you only make your downside? There were times that... When business was really good, you know, the first uh, rush of the invasion, I was making more than my downside. At the end, when I decided to leave, I was making my downside. Well, when you left, <laughs> my point is when you no, were but like in two th there. In 2004, like in 2004, when I decided, you know, I'm out of here, I need to find something else. I was only making my downside and I was working four days a week. And again, I don't think that's a fair comparison because downsides have gotten much, much higher. You know, if you're one of, and again, I don't know each ind individual person's deal, but in 2018, 2019, when AEW was a thing, there was a lot of people getting big downsides, far bigger than I ever had as a downside. So those who have the, you know, 300, 400, 600, 750, heaven forbid, the million dollar year downside guys that are now working one quarter of the dates, I don't think they have a whole lot of room to complain. They should be thrilled to death. Now, if you're someone who had, you know, heaven forbid you were on a, you know, a developmental deal and you got called up and hadn't signed a individual deal, or if you had a hundred thousand dollar a year downside, but you were making 250, 350 before the pandemic, then yes, those people I can see being furious with, oh man, can you let me, you know, make some damn money on my fucking Twitch because, you know, I'm 
making a third of what I used to, and I got bills to pay those people. Because again, that's where there was times, and I knew someone once, that there was a year that he made 10 times his downside. But I also know people that had big downsides and only ever made their downside because your downside was so big. So depending on which one of those people you are, this pandemic is a completely different situation. Where again, just looking at me as an agent, a producer, if you will, I would have fewer work dates during the pandemic than I did before the pandemic. And I was on a pay structure that didn't vary depending on whether I was on a show or not. If I worked one show a month, I'd get paid this much. If I worked 15 shows a month, I'd get paid this much. I was on a set pay. So if in the pandemic I was working fewer shows now, then the pandemic's actually benefiting me. But if you're someone who was relying on, you know, the live event uh, merch sales and the actual live event, like you were a, a guy with a low downside, but working all the shows, then the pandemic's worse. So it's not like everyone has all of a sudden taken this huge pay cut because they're not working house shows. Now there's people that are actually just making the same amount of money and having to work a whole lot less for it. Sure. But we still don't, I don't know. I don't know if you know, but what happens to all of these these wrestlers that were working these pay-per-views? We used to always hear about WrestleMania bonuses. I mean, what was the bonuses? What kind of bonus structure did we get for uh, for uh, whatever, Royal Rumble or, or TLC? And now there's no gate. Nobody's buying tickets to these shows. I mean, are they getting their bonuses? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if they did. I always sort of half assumed that... and. Again, rumors. I never had anyone completely confirm it, but I, I was of the impression that the only guys that really got pay-per-view bonuses in the um, network era were the top guys that had the huge downsides because you're going to have to pay him his mill and a half no matter what. You've got to come up with the money from somewhere. So it's like, well, we'll allocate a, you know, a check from his network. But if you're a middle or bottom guy, that's probably going to earn his downside on these live events. They don't need to throw him a pay-per-view bonus because there isn't actually any pay-per-view revenue. And at the end of the day, if he's going to make his downside on live events, it won't matter. But if you lose the live events, they're still going to have to make your downside somehow. So it's different with everybody, but I can't imagine anyone was getting much of a pay-per-view bonus check anyway, because Live gates weren't exactly gigantic, and pay-per-view revenues almost non-existent. So I don't know where the bonus would be coming from. I think the whole concept of a downside contract in this era is silly anyway, because your two biggest revenue streams now are, you know, your billion-dollar contract television rights fees and your billion-dollar contract peacock money. It's like the vast majority of the revenue generated by talent now is fixed so i think talent needs to be set to a fixed salary at this point in time anyway if you love these video clips head down there to the bottom right hand side of the screen and click join for just seven dollars and 99 cents per month you get full access to all of the episodes over 300 at current count Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.